Thank you very much. A bit uh, over the top, I'm afraid. Uh, so, around about 1980, um, I was showing a science journalist around the Inorganic Chemistry Lab in Oxford, and the last thing he said was, send my love to Max. <laughs> now, uh, people then did not say, send my love to Max, unless they were members of the family. Uh, <laughs> uh, so when I got a chance, I asked Max, who was this guy who sent his love to you? Oh, I was interned with him. <laughs> uh, so uh, we've heard a lot about internment, but I just show you this quote. Everything I quote is from Max himself. Uh, May 20th, 1940, to his parents there, is assembled among us the most distinguished crowd of people I have ever seen together. All the refugees from Cambridge University undergraduates, research students, lecturers, fellows of colleges. We've already started a kind of university. I am secretary of the Natural Sciences <laughs> faculty. I have acquired some very nice new friends. Uh, uh, so, uh, 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 before we get back to Max, I just uh, say, I, I, I've, in one of my jobs, I'm more or less hereditary job. Uh, I, I'm human rights representative of the Royal Society and I've been trying to compile a list of some of the distinguished scientists who were refugees. Um, uh, it's not complete. Um, uh, if you have others you know about, not necessarily fellows of the Royal Society, please let me know. Uh, uh, but you've seen some of the people, for instance, Marta Fulk, uh, there, who we mentioned, Brigitte Skonas was, was, was here in the Department of Biochemistry, a fellow of the Royal Society. Uh, there, there are indeed a few women among them. Anyway, uh, if you don't know about Max, I passed uh, this rather important letterbox this morning outside Pembroke College, where you can see, I think uh, uh, we've got a lot of Nobel Prize winners, but I don't know that we've got anybody else who's on a postage stamp. Uh, uh, and that letterbox has an expansion of the postage stamp on it. <laughs> uh, uh, but, but what Max did um, uh, was that he worked out how to uh, discover the three-dimensional structure of proteins, um, and uh, that was one thing, and the other really important thing was that he founded the Laboratory of Molecular Biology in Cambridge. Uh, uh, so the, the, those, those are two things. These days, uh, uh, of the order of 100,000 proteins with known structures, no drug is ever uh, in, investigated as a drug possibility without a molecular structure bound to a protein and so on and so forth. But anyway, never mind about that. Let's get back to the time we're talking about. Uh, so, born in Vienna, uh, where he did his undergraduate work, he decided, nothing to do with Hitler, he decided he'd move to Cambridge uh, to do his PhD, uh, and did it indeed under J.D. Bernal and Lawrence Bragg. Uh, there was a change of supervisors, as you will see, in the Cavendish Laboratory the Physics Department, although he was a chemist by training. And he started on the X-ray crystallography of proteins already in 1937 with the aim of understanding how hemoglobin worked. And he continued to work on hemoglobin, not quite till he stopped research altogether, a few months before he died, but almost. Uh, so uh, that's a picture from 1942. Um, Max had four scientific heroes. Uh, and uh, I'll just show you a little bit about each of those. Four heroes who he got to know here in Cambridge. Uh, number one here, the supervisor, Sage. Knowledge poured from him as from a fountain, unselfconsciously, vividly, without showing off on any subject under the sun. 
He was the most incredible, magnetic and interesting character I'd ever met. In my native Austria, I never knew that anyone like that even existed. <laughs> um, Lawrence Bragg became his supervisor when Bernal moved to Birkbeck. Um, and this is what he wrote in a letter to his in-laws in 1944 about Bragg. He has an extraordinarily clear vision and a powerful imagination coupled with a boyish enthusiasm and spirit of adventure. I owe much to him for the success I've had so far. Uh, perhaps he looks slightly forbidding on this, but far from it. Uh, um, David Kalin. Uh, David Kalin taught Max everything he got to know at that stage about handling bio biological samples. Um, and of Kalin, uh, he wrote, scientists from all over the world sought him like an oracle. There is knowledge, wisdom, and humanity. He would always listen to any one of us, his students. Uh, so Kalin uh, was of Polish extraction uh, and was the quick professor of microbiology or something like that. Um, and number four, uh, Dorothy Hodgkin. Dorothy was a research student with Bernal uh, a couple of years ahead of Max. Uh, and uh, Dorothy's uncanny knack of solving difficult structures came from a combination of manual skill, mathematical ability, and profound knowledge. She had no enemies, not even among those whose scientific theories she demolished. <laughs> uh, 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 so, um, the, the, these people were immensely influential on Max, uh, and he made sure that I met them all. Uh, so, uh, he wanted to uh, tell, tell, tell us about them. Um, so he'd come to uh, Cambridge in 1936, um, and this incident becomes very important in the story. Um, a, a businessman who um, was obviously very rich uh, uh, gave, gave up his business in 1931 uh, for the science of snow and ice, walked into the crystallography section of the Cavendish and said, I need a crystallographer who, could, who can ski. Uh, and Max was the, uh, needless to say, the only person who uh, was both a crystallographer and could ski. And he recruited Max to come the following year on a, a, a field trip to the Jungfraujoch research station in the Bernese Oberland, uh, then very new research station, first, probably the first international laboratory in the whole world. Uh, and um, uh, th this is Max again. Um, uh, he's in the ice grotto, converted into a lab, and there. That's a whole other story. I'm not going to tell you more. But learning about ice became important. Um, so, uh, of course, the annexation, the Anschluss, uh, was brought huge change. March 38. Uh, in 38, Bernal moved to Birkbeck, and the new Cavendish professor, Bragg, who I mentioned, became Max's supervisor. Uh, like quite a lot of people we've heard about, Max get, received support from the Rockefeller Foundation uh, from January 1939. And uh, in 39, his parents, Hugo and Daly, arrived in Cambridge, um, having escaped Vienna. Uh, and of course, they'd lost all their money. They had been very rich, but they'd lost their money. Uh, and instead of being supported by them, he had to support them, which he could actually manage to do just about. Uh, being pretty frugal with the aid of the Rockefeller money. Uh, so that's his parents. Um, in March 1940, he submitted his PhD thesis, and uh, in 
May 1940, he was arrested uh, as an enemy alien. You've heard about that just now from Miriam. Um, uh, so um, he was first sent to Bury St. Edmunds, then to Highton near Liverpool, then the Isle of Man, and then to Quebec. Um, and uh, th these are a few quotes to Anne Hartridge, his girlfriend. Only my body is in Canada. When I don't work, my thoughts are in England. And I think of you and my people and friends, and I dream of all the marvellous things I shall do when I come back. Um, next one, we set up a camp university. I lecture on x-rays and crystals, and I study maths and theoretical physics with excellent teachers. And um, I should like to swim across the ocean if there were so much as a 1% chance to reach England alive. Uh, uh, I think you're beginning to get the very substantial difference in his attitude from Miriam's parents. Uh, of course, he was younger. Um, so in January 41, thanks to the determined efforts of Kayleen, Brunel, Bragg and others, and of course the SPSL, he returned to the UK and he wrote uh, to Evelyn Machin, um, I had spent days and nights imagining what coming home would be like, but the real thing surpassed all my expectations. People seemed to have forgotten that all the grudges they ever had against me and to remember just nothing but what a good fellow Perutz had always been. Uh, um, so, um, uh, to his disappointment, his girlfriend Anne Hartridge broke off the um, uh, relationship, but then, of course, I wouldn't be here if that hadn't happened. Um, and um, in uh, March 1942, he married Gisela Peiser, uh, who's been mentioned already. Gisela came from Berlin. Um, her family left for Switzerland in 1933 when she was 16 um, and she came to Britain in 1938. Uh, her brother, her aunt and uncle also came here and she became, uh, after various jobs, secretary to Esther Simpson at the SPSL and uh, it was at the SPSL that Max met Giesler. So Vivian and I would not exist if it hadn't been for the SPSL. Um, so, um, back in Britain, he was recruited to a top secret project because of his knowledge of ice and crystallography. So that trip to, with, to the Jungfrau had a very special knock-on effect. This was called Project Habakkuk, uh, and uh, in August 1943, um, they decided that he needed to visit the USA for this project. Uh, and you, he couldn't visit the USA unless he became British, um, so uh, he had to be naturalized. So the Project Habakkuk was the, the idea was to build a giant earth, uh, uh, aircraft carrier. This is the giant earth aircraft carrier alongside a conventional one. And this was to be built of ice. Um, uh, it was a totally mad project. The ice was to be in reinforced with sawdust, making a composite which is actually much tougher than ice. And this stuff was named, uh, named Pycrete after the inventor Pike. Um, so, uh, anyway, Max was naturalized um, uh, 30th of August 1943. My naturalization was the quickest job the Home Office had ever done. The record was that they gave me the certificate before I had even paid the fee. <laughs> uh, thus ended one of the happiest days of my life. Um, so he was absolutely over the moon to be British. Um, so, uh, of course, the Project Habakkuk 
eventually flopped. <laughs> you won't be surprised about that. And he returned to research in Cambridge, supported once more oops, by the Rockefeller. Um, I just put this in 1944. Uh, he wrote his first popular science article, The Protein, the Machines of Life, in a magazine called Scientific Monthly. He became a prolific uh, popular science writer. Um, the Machines of Life was an incredibly prescient title. You could write that now. Um, so in December 44, Vivian was born. Um, you see Giesler let out of hospital after quotes only 10 days. <laughs> Things have changed. Um, no mention about family who lost their lives in the Holocaust in the letters until really after the war had ended. September 45, letters about relations who were killed in concentration camp. But I must add that the vast majority of the close family, both on my mother and on my father's side, escaped. They were distributed across the globe, but they did, the vast majority did escape, but not all. Um, 1947, he founded the Medical Research Laboratory for Molecular Biology, only it had a slightly different title then, and that is what you will see on the train from um, Cambridge to London on the left-hand side as you come out of Cambridge. Very prominent, super modern building now. Um, final quotation, uh, which comes from the foreword to the book Hitler's Gift that has been mentioned before. Had I stayed in my native Austria, even if there had been no Hitler, I could never have solved the problem of protein structure or founded the laboratory of molecular biology. I would not have had the outstanding teachers and colleagues or learnt scientific rigour. I would have lacked the stimulus, the role models, the tradition of attacking important problems, however difficult, that Cambridge provided. It was Cambridge that made me. And for that, I'm forever grateful. We all owe a tremendous debt to Britain. So Max was more British than the British, uh, and uh, in, in many ways. Um, so just to finish with, uh, following Stephen's talk yesterday, I thought I'd put this up. Um, this is Husni and Reem Nakashbandi and their children, Noor and Amma. Um, I hosted Husni in my lab with support from Cara a few years ago. They still live in York. We see them regularly. The children have grown. but uh, And I'm very pleased to say that we are about to start in my department of chemistry the fourth Syrian uh, research uh, visitor fellow, whatever you call it. Um, three of them supported that then uh, by CARA and one by the American equivalent. So with that, I will just show you this. If you want to read more, there's loads about uh, Max. Uh, Vivian collected a load of letters there. Uh, there's a biography by Georgina Ferry. Many of the quotations uh, were reproduced, well, the, the, the articles were reproduced in this collection, uh, I wish I made you angry earlier, by Max. Uh, so if you want to see more. Thank you.